Hello builders. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of TablePress, one of my favorite WordPress plugins. And best of all, it's completely free. We'll start with the basics like adding data and images and adding and reordering rows and columns. Then we'll move on to styling your tables and making them fully functional and responsive on smaller screens. All right, let's get to it. All right, so first off, let's install TablePress. So we'll go to plugins, add new, And you can search for the plugin. We'll just search for table press. Install now. And activate. And you'll see that if you look over here, a new table press icon has been added to your WordPress dashboard. And you have a couple options here. Uh, you can see your existing tables, but we don't have any yet. You can import a table from a CSV or HTML file. And you have some plugin options. So let's go create our first table. So we'll go to table press and add new table. All right, so the first step is to name your table. And I tend to like to do something descriptive. So if you know what sort of data is gonna be in the table, I would give it a name that reflects that. I'm going to be making a table of candy. So I'll just call it the candy table. And you can put an extra description that will help you when you're looking at your long list of tables to determine what's in this table. And next up, you can choose the number of rows and columns to start your table with. And don't worry, you can add or remove rows and columns later, so you don't have to get this exactly right. So just give it your best guess as to how many you need. So I think I need about maybe four columns and five rows. And we'll add the table. And now you have your basic empty table here. And you can click the preview button if you just want to see what it looks like with no data. And as you can see, there's nothing really going on here. So let's add some data to our table. So this first section here, you can make the header. And by default, that's the, this option is selected. The first row of the table is the header. And the header row is a little bit different than other rows of the table in that you can add, uh, you can make the data sortable by the header attribute, or you can, and it has a background color and a couple other things. All right, so let me fill out my table real quick. So I'll have picture here. So if we save this real quick and just click preview, you can see that this is our table header now. So by default, any data in the table head will be bold. So next up we can add some data and it's really simple to add simple text. You can just type it right in the box. So I know this one will be Black Forest, Reese's, Mars, all right, so how do we add a picture to a table? Well, it's pretty simple. You can just click this insert image button right here and it will give you a little pop-up dialog to tell you how this works, but I'm, you can just do it along with me. And you'll see that there's a little highlight now around this. So that shows that the insert image uh, feature is active. And now you just have to click inside whichever box you wanna add an image to. So I'm gonna put it in this box right here. And It'll give you the option to either upload files directly or you can choose from a media library. I've already uploaded these, so I'm gonna choose one from here. And I'm gonna add the Black Forest Gummy Bears. You can add the alt text if you want. Insert into the table. And you'll see it has inserted some HTML code. Now you can't see it all at once. It sort of overflows the cell here. So you can grab this little tab and expand it as far as you need to to see what's going on in this cell here. So we've got our image source code, the alt text, and it's specifying a width and height for our image. Now we can change this. If you want a little bit smaller image to have it fit better in the context of the table, we can change it to a 200 by 200 pixel image just by changing those two attributes. And we'll click save and preview the changes. And there's our image right there. And we could make this even smaller if we wanted. So we could just go back and edit it to be 100 by 100. save and preview, and there you go. It's a smaller image. I think that's probably the right size for our table. And so let me go ahead and do that for the rest of the products and I'll be right back. All right, so if we preview our table, you can see we've got a basic structure of our table here. We've got the table header, the images, brand, flavor, and we're gonna have a link here, or we've got a section for buy where we can make a little buy button, because I know a lot of you are making affiliate sites where maybe you wanna rank products. But one thing I forgot to put in here is the price. So let me show you how to add a column. So we'll go back out here, and you can just click wherever you want the column to go. So we'll click this one, and you can just click add columns, and 
you can see it's put it to the right of our buy column, but I actually want it to the left. So all you have to do is just grab this little guy and you'll see if you hover over the letter of the column, this little uh, move arrow appears and you can just drag it right here. So we'll reorder it and add the label price. All right, that was easy. Now, before we get into creating a button over here, let me show you how to make, let me show you how you can make this sortable. If, for example, if you really have a long set of data and you want people to be able to find what they're looking for in your data set, well, there's some nice built-in uh, JavaScript features that allow you to search or filter your, your table. And you can see by default, these are all enabled, but you can't see it until you embed the table in a post. So let's go ahead and create a new post. And we'll just call it table press demo. And to add this table to your post, you just have to go up here and you can see the short code. It automatically generates it for you. And it's based on the number of the basically assigns an ID number to each table press table you create. So we can copy that and we can paste that right here. And that's all you have to do. We'll just publish the posts and view the posts. And you'll see that there's these new features in here. So we have uh, pagination. If you had more than 10 entries, you could show. We can search and filter our table by only certain names. So for example, if I want peanut butter, it shows me only that. You can sort by price from high to low or low to high, sort by flavor, brand, etc. And if we go back here, for example, if you know you don't need the pagination feature, you can turn that off in the table options. So we can turn off pagination and this will disappear when we refresh. So that's gone. All right, so next up, let me show you how to add links to your tables and you can style it into a button if you want. So we'll go back here. All right, so inserting a link is really easy. All you have to do is click this insert link button right here under the table manipulation section. And again, that's highlighted and you click in the cell where you wanna add a link and you can add your URL. So for now, we'll just link to amazon.com. I'm not gonna to link to the exact product page and you can write your link text. So we'll call it by now. And you can opt to open it in a new tab. I recommend this in general because you don't want people to leave your page. You want them to stay on your page, but uh, browse the new site on a separate tab if they want. And we'll click add link. And you can see it's created this A, uh, an HTML ad attribute for a link. And if we click save and preview, we've got our link right here. Now, beyond just links, you can use the advanced editor, which gives you some sort of WYSIWYG, like text editor style control to uh, add a little bit more content to your table cells. So you can click on advanced editor and we'll click in a cell right here. And you could, for example, make some bold text by just highlighting and clicking bold. And it will automatically add the HTML markup for you. You could add an image uh, or you can add a link. So for example, if we want to make this a link, we'll highlight it, click the link button, and we'll add our URL. We'll just make it the same page, click add link. And if we preview, now this link is in bold. All right, so for now, I'm just going to copy the same link to all the table cells. And obviously you would want a different URL in each of these tables. So you would want, like for example, the correct product page to be linked here, but we're just going to keep them the same for simplicity. Now let's say I wanna add another product to my table because I've run out of room. Now what I need to do is add another row. So I can just click right here to show where I want the row to go. And you can click to add a certain number of rows. By default it's one, but we could add as many, you can add as many rows as you need. So we could, for example, add four rows and I'll just click add and they'll automatically be added down there. Now I don't actually need these rows, so I'm gonna delete them for now. You can also duplicate existing rows if you like the template of a row to make it easier to edit the new row. So you can just click duplicate and it'll create an exact copy of that row. Then you can change the data in here. And of course you can reorder rows just like columns. All right, so let's delete that for now. And let's move on to styling the table. Now, the first thing I want to do is, this is my biggest pet peeve with table press, 
is if you go to a website, everybody, I would say nine out of 10 websites using table press, just don't adjust the styling at all. So you can tell that they're using table press because every table looks like this. It just has the exact same head color. So if you do one thing to style your table, just change the color of your table header. That's it. So let me show you how to do that. And you don't have to use the WordPress customizer or any sort of uh, custom CSS in your theme. TablePress actually has this uh, built-in feature for their custom CSS. And the nice part, part about this is that it only injects the CSS into layouts where you're using TablePress. So it saves some load time for your theme. It doesn't slow your site down. And to get to that, you go to plugin options. And I'm just gonna open that in a new tab for now. And this is where you can add your custom CSS. Now, the way you apply your custom CSS, you can either add a class to individual tables or you can apply your CSS to all tables. And I'll show you how to do both. So if you come down to the advanced section here, under the table options, you see you have the ability to add a class to your table. And this allows you to style this table separate from other table press tables. So I'll make this, for example, my class for the table and we'll click changes. Okay, and if we refresh the page and inspect the source code now, and we'll go up here, you can see it's a table ID of table press one, and one of the classes under this class list here, it shows my class, which has been added to the table. So we can use that to style our table. And in order to change the background color here, the that exact thing that we want to change is we want to change the background color of these th these table head cell elements because if we scroll down here you'll see that they have a background color that's being set to this color and if you're using chrome inspector tools or the inspector tools in your browser you can actually mess around with this color picker here and see what other color maybe would look good for your site for example we could just do like a simple gray and then if we did do that we might want to change the text color for example uh, but we can do that next but I'm gonna do something a little funky. I think maybe we'll try a gradient. What we're gonna do is remove that background altogether. And then for the entire uh, table head, we're going to add a background. And what do we want it to look like? Maybe like some dark blue. just sort of like a subtle color. We're gonna move it from like a navy to a grayish color. And then we're gonna change the uh, colors of our text to white so you can see it. So I'm just gonna save this for now because that looks good enough. And we'll paste that into our CSS code. So let me show you how to write this. So the for the selectors we're gonna be targeting, we can go here under the table and we want the class table press class and the my class class. So we're gonna to go to plugin options and we're gonna do a table press table. And if we just wanted to target all table press tables, we could uh, not put in the my class, but we're gonna target only for this particular table. So we're gonna add my class. And there's no space between these two because they're in the same element. Uh, both these classes are assigned to the same element. So we keep them attached together. And we're going to be targeting the uh, table head cell element, the TH element, and we're just gonna change the background color to transparent so that we can now add a background color to the entire header and have that show through. And if we just preview that real quick, you can see that this is now transparent. And then next up, we wanna add a rule for table press dot my class t head for the entire table header. And we'll make the background and we're gonna paste in that linear gradient. Oops, I can delete this. So there's our rule. And what this is doing is it's a linear gradient that goes 180 degrees, so from top to bottom, and it goes from this color to this color, uh, basically in a linear fashion. And we'll click save changes. And if we preview again on the front end, just refresh, there's our table. So next up, we need to change the font color for our table header. So one more rule. 
and we can add it under this existing section right here. So we're gonna just go color, which is the font color, and we'll make it white. Save changes and preview. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Now, if you don't want to use a linear gradient on your uh, for your background, you don't have to uh, do this step right here. So we could just comment this out. Let's comment that section out. And instead you can just change this rule right here. So table press dot my class table head or th element, and we'll just change the background color to something else. So you can make it like navy, for example. And if you refresh, it would just be navy in the background. And again, you would want to change the font color to white probably. So all right, so that's all you have to do to style your background color. But personally, I like the way I had it. So we're going to delete. So let's just go back to what we had. And we'll save. All right, and then let's actually turn these links into buttons just to add a little more uh, style to the table. And there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either add a class manually to each of these links, or if you're always gonna be using, for example, the same table layout with the same number of columns, you can just write a rule so that uh, any link that's in this column is always formatted as a link. So for now, we're gonna do that just because it's really quick and easy. And to get the column class, we're gonna inspect again. And you can see right here, it's column five, uh, but it's in the table body. So we want column five, oh, we'll just inspect here. So you can see it's uh, any table uh, TD of column five that has a link. And again, we're gonna target that only at the my class uh, table that has my class assigned to it. And so for example, if you always make product ranking tables that look like this, you would add a specific class to your product ranking tables and then uh, they would always have this button in there. So we'll target So targeting any uh, TD element that is class column five. And to write our rule, <clears throat> and actually we don't want to just uh, target that element. We want to target the ink or target any link that's in that element. So we're gonna, the last thing is to just put an A element there and we can write our button. So let's say uh, padding on the top is five pixels and on the sides is 15 pixels just to start. And we'll try a background color of C green, border two pixels solid gray. And let's just click save changes and see how that looks. All right. Obviously there's a couple problems with this, uh, but we have our button here and I think we just need to add some better styling. So let's right click our button and let's find a nicer color here. All right, we'll try this color and copy that. Make a bigger border and a little bit darker. That's a border radius. And we want the link color to just be black and not underlined. Save changes. All right, that looks like a button. Now, one thing you notice is this text is all lined up at the top of our cells, but because the image is so tall, it looks a little wacky. And I think it would probably look better if it was uh, vertically aligned in the center of our rows here. So let me show you how to fix that with one line of CSS. And we're gonna go back to here. And I'm gonna make this rule for all my table press tables, not just the one that has my class. So we'll just make the, uh, the rule table press 
and we're going to apply it to all the table cell elements. And to write our rule, it's simply vertical align. And we're going to set it to middle. And if we save changes and preview, nothing happens. So let me show you how to fix that. And if you inspect the element and we look at the vertical alignment here, it says it's the top. So here you can see the actual rule that is the default CSS for table press that is making it align to the top. And if we just change this to middle, you can see it nicely centers it in our rows. I think that looks better. So let's just copy this entire rule that we just made. And we can paste that into the bottom of our CSS file. And this will uh, apply to all table press tables, which in general is a good rule, but you could also just add a class in here. So if you just wanted to make it my class, but I'm gonna apply it to all table press tables. We'll click save changes. And you can see that is now fixed. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you how to do is make this table responsive because by default, it just kind of crunches on itself and things start to break. As you can see, the sidebar is causing them to get squished and our button breaks and nobody really likes that. So there's a couple things you can do to make your table press table responsive. All right, so the easiest way to make your tables responsive is to turn on the data tables JavaScript library if you're not already using it and then you can enable horizontal scrolling. Now, this is a super easy fix, but it does break some stuff sometimes, at least on my theme. So I'm gonna show you how to fix that. So let's go to save changes and I'll show you what I mean. So if we go to the front end and refresh, you'll see that the table just resized and it's actually being squished to its minimum size by the, uh, by the horizontal scrolling plugin. And I'll just show you how it works quick and I'll show you how to fix it. So if we resize the browser window, you see that when it gets narrower than the table, this little scroll bar appears. So if we had a really narrow screen, we could scroll and see all the rows. Uh, but there's two problems with what's happening here. One is that it's resized our table to not be full width, which I don't like. And number two is it's breaking my button in half here, which looks terrible. All right, so first off, let's fix this and make it uh, full width again. All right, so all we need to fix this is a line of CSS code, and I will put this down in the video description that you can just copy and paste it. So. Here's the rule. And anytime it's got the data tables wrapper on it, let's make our tables full width. So 100% important. And it's gonna overlie the inline styles that were being applied by this uh, JavaScript library. So we'll click save changes. And if we go back to the page and refresh, it's back to full width. Now the problem still pops in that our button is gonna break when the layout resizes. So let me show you how to fix that. All right, so we'll go back to our plugin options to edit the CSS. And if we go to our uh, styles for our button. You just need to add the line white space with a hyphen and the rule is no wrap. And that will prevent the line from breaking when there's a vertical room to wrap the line. And we'll click save changes. And you can apply this rule to any table, uh, to any table cell where you don't want the text to wrap, but we just need to apply to our button for this table. So we'll refresh and you'll see that if we resize, now that button doesn't wrap at all and we get our nice scroll effect. And you can actually preview this with the Chrome inspector. You can see what it looks like on a mobile screen. So we've got a 400 pixel wide screen here just by selecting this and that's how it looks. And you can use like the touch bar and scroll it left and right. All right, and the last thing I wanna show you how to do is how to add some custom responsive breakpoints to your table using a little bit of CSS. And we're gonna use what's called a media query. And what this is, is code that only kicks in when a certain screen width is met. So let's write a media query like this. Okay, so this is the basic structure of a media query. And what this does is it's gonna target any screen where the max width or the width of the screen is less than or equal to 700 pixels. So this code kicks in when your screen drops below 700 pixels. And then we can write normal CSS rules in here. So for example, we might want to drop the font size on the table cells. Then
that's one thing we could do. And maybe we want to resize this image so that it gets smaller on smaller screens. And this rule is basically targeting any image elements in column one of your table. So that's where our image is. Add the brackets and we can just say width 60 pixels and it will automatically resize to 60 pixels and it will scale uh, the Y axis to correspond to the width. And maybe we wanna delete a column altogether because it's not really necessary. So we'll, we'll remove a column on the small screens to make the rest of them fit. So we'll cut out this uh, brand column maybe. So we can say table of my class column two. And the rule is just change it to display, none, where it completely removes the column. And we'll just click publish and you can see these changes. We're just gonna resize the screen here. And you should see as it gets smaller, there's our breakpoint right there. You see the font size just got smaller. The image got smaller and that entire brand column is removed. And you can see this whole thing fits nicely now in the smaller screen size. And there's a couple other things you could do. For example, I might wanna shrink the padding and the font size on my buttons so that takes up less space. You can remove the paddings in the cells. It's sort of up to your imagination and the needs of your specific table design. Uh, and you can just do it all in the WordPress customizer or put the code right in the TablePress custom CSS.